Hello, uh, hi, my name is Troy Trashinsky with AIT. Uh, I'd just like to start by thanking everybody for joining us for the webinar today. Uh, the agenda is to spend about 20 to 30 minutes covering uh, MIL standard 1553 over Ethernet using the IRIG 106 Chapter 10 protocol and standard. Uh, so once again, thanks for joining us. Uh, I've got my name, my email address, and phone number for myself, and also my co-host Ken Bisson, um, his email address and phone number up. If you guys have any questions or uh, any more, uh, want any more information or would like to chat about any of the topics uh, covered today, uh, after we're done here, please feel free to send Ken or I an email or just uh, contact us directly. Uh, we'll also stay online for uh, a little bit after we conclude the webinar and the software demo here. Uh, in case everybody would like to do, uh, we'll be available to chat using the chat feature of the GoToWebinar um, tool here that we're using. So uh, if you'd like to chat that way, uh, we'll stick around for a little bit after we're done. So thanks again for joining us. Once again, um, 20, 30 minutes is about what we planned uh, for you if you want to accommodate your schedules today. All right, here we go. So what is IRIG 106 Chapter 10? Uh, well, first of all, you can uh, freely uh, download and get access to the specifications, the IRIG 106 specifications at the web address shown here. Uh, so they're, it's, they're an open standard. Uh, and the standard, um, the purpose of it is to ensure interoperability in flight test environments and telemetry applications. Um, so the specification is developed and maintained by the telemetry group of the uh, United States Range Commanders Council. And Chapter 10 specifically, the Chapter 10 part of IRIG 106, specifies the interface standards for the operations of onboard flight recorders. So that's that's what we're going to focus on today and specifically with how that relates to MIL standard 1553. So a little diagram here to show uh, kind of summarize the interfaces that are covered in the chapter 10 document. So on the, the full uh, to the left side of the the slide here we have a, um, we show some of the different avionics data buses uh, that are covered in the spec. So the spec um, provides a listing of the data buses that the, the onboard flight recorders should be capable of, of capturing data from and also provides details on how to encode the data captured from those data buses. So in this picture we're showing you know a recorder capturing the capability to capture from multiple MIL standard 1553 buses, multiple AIRINC uh, 429 uh, serial channels and also from uh, uh, avionics ethernet or airing 664 an afdx type of uh, avionics data bus a network interface then uh, in the center here is um, showing all of the the protocols or i guess the um, the digital interfaces that are available for downloading and streaming data off of the recording device so fiber channel is covered uh, also a firewire interface these two use mostly for downloading, so that's after the fact, after the data has been captured, say after a flight test, to uh, use those as an interface to download all of the captured avionics bus data off of the, the recorder. Ethernet is also described as a download interface, and it can also be used to stream the data. So by this I mean kind of a live stream, basically as you're recording the data, to be able to go ahead, grab it off of the, the uh, you know, one or two or more of the avionics buses, to encode it into uh, an ethernet uh, frame or a, a data stream and to send it out over the ethernet local area network. Um, there's also a command and control protocol uh, that's defined to use you know, either like a RS-232 serial link or the ethernet interface also to have an external device uh, basically be able to send commands in to operate and control the operation of the, the recording device. Okay, so today we'll mostly be focusing on the Ethernet LAN interface and as you would use it for streaming data. So basically creating a live stream of data kind of in real time as you're capturing it off of the, the data buses uh, on the front end of the recorder. The uh, Chapter 10 specification also covers uh, the encoding of the captured data into the data archive. So basically how the data is stored on the mass storage device, the file system and the archive file formats that, that can be used to do that. And we'll also take a look at or show an example of reading and opening some data from some of these archive files today also. So digging a little bit further into the Ethernet uh, local area network streaming um, kind of use case here. So IRIG uh, chapter 10 defines 
basically it provides a, some specification for how the data captured from the mill standard 1553 bus and the other avionics buses how that should be formatted and multiplexed into the UDP payload so the user data uh, gram protocol which is I think like a layer 4 protocol in the, the local area network Ethernet IP LAN uh, stack there it defines how to encode that data into the into the payload portion of a UDP datagram that can then be sent uh, across the local area network. Uh, so a stream, when we talk about a stream today, what I'm talking about is that basically the data that's being sent uh, streaming out to a specific destination UDP port across the, the Ethernet network, the LAN network. So uh, a chapter 10 stream can contain data from one or more of the avionics buses on the, the front end of the recorder. So what that means is to a specific UDP port, the data recorder can send and, and multiplex the data from one 1553 bus or maybe multiple buses through the same uh, UDP port. Or there could even potentially be a mix within that stream of data from, say, multiple 1553 buses, multiple 429, and multiple other you know, avionics communications interfaces from the aircraft subsystem. So, um, because the data is streamed uh, across the LAN using standard LAN technologies and you know using IP and, and UDP and and you know standard LAN type of communication protocols, that means that it's also possible to to address that stream as a, a multicast or a broadcast stream, meaning the the recording um, device would be sending it out and the the network switches and basically the LAN system that it's it's streaming out into would broadcast that data so that any client connected to that local area network could have access to the stream. And all those clients could also have access to that stream of avionics bus data simultaneously. So they could all, everybody, all the clients on the network that chose to, to go and capture that stream could be looking at that data um, while another you know, client on the network is doing the same thing. Uh, it also means, because we're using sort of standard LAN technologies here that it, it, you could actually get access to those streams without actually having a hardwired um, connection. So if you had a, a wireless bridge or a, you know like a, a wireless router connected in the network somewhere there, uh, any kind of device that um, has the, you know, the wireless capabilities, the wireless ethernet capabilities could also uh, get access to the avionics data uh, coming from the data recorder. So it's, it's nice uh, using Ethernet from that standpoint is the data can, I guess, be multiplied and sent to lots of, lots of um, clients in, in the network. And uh, so it, it makes the data really accessible. Um, the other thing is, uh, because of all the addressing capabilities and the, the, you know, the massive amount of address spaces in a, in a local area network, um, it would also be possible to have a situation where multiple recording devices were connected to the same LAN and maybe each device was sending out one or more streams uh, to different UDP destination ports. So what that means is you could have multiple recorders on the same network providing multiple streams and simultaneously multiple clients could all have you know independent access to each of those streams from each of the avionics recorders. So um, really a, a nice way to have a lot of access to multiple different avionics uh, data buses, uh, data kind of in a, a, a fairly live type of situation. Okay, digging in a little more, we can uh, take a look here at the um, the format of the data that is um, sent within the, the data packets that go across the LAN. So on the left here we have a full Ethernet uh, frame. So you have an Ethernet header which basically contains a source and destination address and then a trailer which has a CRC for that frame um, that's sent across the Ethernet LAN. Then you have your Internet Protocol header. Uh, the Internet Protocol layer of the network is going to provide some nice utilities for addressing different hosts in the network and for doing things like uh, packet fragmentation and reassembly if you want to send large pieces of data across the network that are larger than the, the maximum transmission unit. Uh, supported by the Ethernet layer. Then the UDP protocol, the user data camp, datagram protocol, is going to provide some additional addressing features and CRC. So this is going to allow you to address the, the data streams to say specific applications in the clients uh, throughout the network. <coughs> Excuse me. So each UDP packet uh, within the chapter 10 data stream that's going across the network 
it has the capability, based on the protocol, to contain one or more uh, IRIG 106 Chapter 10 packets. And each Chapter 10 packet uh, that can be in the message can contain data from one type of, of data bus. So you can have, within a single UDP message, you can say have multiple Chapter 10 packets from no standard 1553 buses. And you could also, within the same packet, have one or more packets, uh, chapter 10 level packets from an ERIC 429 or other type of data bus that's covered, avionics data bus that's covered by the, um, by the specification. <clears throat> so then, if we get down into the contents of the chapter 10 packet, each uh, chapter 10 packet has a packet header and then a, a packet trailer which basically is a checksum, a CRC over all the data contained in the chapter 10 packet to, to go ahead and ensure um, in the integrity of the, the data that you're actually seeing what was captured off the bus. So uh, the chapter 10 packet header, that contains some useful information. So one of them obviously is because you can have several packets in a, in a message from multiple different types of data buses, uh, one of the key uh, fields in the chapter 10 packet header is a bus type indicator. So basically telling you what type of bus the data came from. Then there's also a channel indicator. So each each avionics recording device can have several uh, channels on it connected to you know different types of avionics buses. And part of the, the recorder configuration is an ID. A specific ID is given to a specific bus. So within the chapter 10 packet header you get a channel ID which will, will basically indicate if you know the, the configuration of the recording device, it'll tell you exactly which data bus interface, uh, say if there's multiple 1553 interfaces on that recorder, it'll tell you which specific inter bus interface that that, uh, you know, these, uh, the messages inside this packet came from. Uh, the chapter 10 header also includes a sequence number. So Ethernet uh, and you know Ethernet and specifically Ethernet using IP and UDP is a best effort network, uh, meaning that there, it, it's there's no guaranteed delivery, and in furthermore there's no uh, guaranteed uh, order of delivery. So it is possible uh, if you had a heavily switched network and also some IP routers in the the Ethernet LAN that the uh, the Chapter 10 packets could re could be uh, received at the client device and not in the same order that they were sent. So the, the packet headers also contain a sequence number that can be used to identify and basically resequence the, uh, the, the packets of the avionics bus data when, they're, when they arrive at the client. Um, okay, so then uh, just talking about 1553 here specifically, when we get down into the 1553 message part of the chapter 10 packets, uh, we see the format uh, furthest to the right here that we have. So each 1553 message has a timestamp uh, that was applied to the message uh, when it was received at the recorder. So this is what is applied right at the bus interface at the recording device. And then it also contains a status word. And so this is basically a bit field. So uh, I think it's a 32-bit, I uh, could be wrong, maybe 16-bit word. But it essentially has bit fields to indicate any errors that were detected. Uh, like a gap violation or a parity error, that kind of thing that were detected at the bus interface in the recording device. So the protocol does support uh, a way to transport across the Ethernet LAN um, even error information that was detected at the recording device um, interface with the avionics bus. Then there's also a, a gap time word to, to indicate the, the, the gap times for the mill standard 15. 53 messages, so the time between the command and the, the response, the status word or the data words from the, uh, the remote terminal devices. Then you get the command word for the 1553 transferred, and then the following uh, associated 1553 data or status words depending on the type of transfer. Uh, you know, was it a remote terminal to remote terminal, or a bus controller to remote terminal, or vice versa type of data transfer. So really, uh, for each 1553 message transfer, you really get pretty much all of the information that you can determine with a standard you know, uh, recording, um, error detection, bus recorder type of interface at the avionics recorder.